thank you all the advisors uh, joining us uh, today from across Canada. So it's going to be a either good morning or good afternoon to advisors uh, joining us uh, today. Uh, for those of you that uh, I have not met or don't know me, uh, my name is Alex Chan. I'm the regional wealth leader for Western Canada based out of our Langley, BC office and I'm part of our national banking and wealth team. I work very closely with uh, Graham Allen, who is with us here today, who is of course our wealth leader uh, in the East, based out of our office in Markham. Uh, Vic Ray is our national director of banking services, and he is based in Vancouver. And our team is led by Jason Payne, uh, head of banking and wealth, based in the Maritimes. We just say he's based in the Maritimes because he's all over the place. So uh, he doesn't have one specific office that he, he works out of. But it gives me great pleasure to introduce our friends from Assumption Life today. Uh, Danielle Audet is the AVP for individual insurance and investments for the past five years. And he's going to give us a high level overview and introduce the three part investment knowledge series. And then he's going to pass it over to Claudette Richard, who will deliver uh, the training. So it gives me pleasure to introduce uh, Claudette. Uh, Claudette is the National Director of Investment and Retirement at Assumption Life. Uh, Claudette joined Assumption in August of 2019, and as mentioned, the National Director of Investments and Retirement. And her primary responsibilities uh, is for the business development on the wealth side for Assumption Life. And I learned something today when I read Claudette's uh, uh, biography. Uh, Claudette studied in the field of science and nutrition and holds a Bachelor of Science and completed her master's degree in science and nutrition. And she continues to hold her naturopathic license. And that's, uh, uh, that's pretty unbelievable. So congratulations to for that. Uh, prior to joining Assumption Life, uh, Claudette worked in the financial services industry since 1992 as a financial planner with RBC and MD management. So she brings to everybody uh, that valuable field experience. Uh, she's completed her PFP, uh, PFC, CSE, WME, LLQP, and her CFP. Uh, Claudette is involved as well in a peacekeeping group that was founded in Moncton. And its objective is to create peace and awareness and bring peace to our world, which is just phenomenal. Uh, Claudette is also a committee volunteer member with the Canadian Pension and Benefits uh, Institute. So please all join me in welcoming Claudette, who will be delivering the training today. But first of all, I just want to pass it over to Danielle, who will give a high level overview of, of the program. And I believe they went through this program with their team across Canada and had uh, lots of great feedback. So Danielle and uh, Claudette, uh, over to you. And thank you once again for hosting uh, our advisors today. Great, thanks Alex. Hello to Graham. And also thanks to our partners at IDC for joining us today. Actually with, uh, with the intro that Alex just did, now you know that every road leads to investment in here. And that's a little bit the theme actually of, uh, of this three-part series. So that was, put, that was put together actually to help you navigate the world of investment from an insurance advisor's perspective. Now the purpose of the program is threefold. Today we seek to answer why it makes sense to do some investment. The next one will address what you need to know about investment. And finally, the last one will show you how you could get going with Assumption Life. Now, with, with inflation going crazy and volatility that feels more like a roller coaster at the fairground, we know that it's not always easy uh, to do some investment. But there are three things that actually that we know. The need for insurance and estate planning is not going away at all. And the importance for planning and savings 
is more important more than ever before. And the third thing is that assumptions there, assumption life is there for you to make your life as an advisor as user-friendly as possible. Now, you're in good hands today with our National Director of Investment, Claudette Richard. Claudette, take it away. So thank you for all being here. We're going to create a win-win holistic approach going beyond selling life insurance. The agenda today includes we're going to talk about the client's best interest, your revenue potential, retaining your clients, cross-selling, time management, and a win-win holistic approach. The history of the of the investments in the advent of the public markets. The market started in Belgium in 1531, and in, 19, in 1792, the New York Stock Exchange was formed. In 1852 was the Toronto Stock Exchange, the Dow Jones in 1896, and then we have the S&P 500 that was in 1957. And it's interesting to note that in 1952, only 4.2% of Americans invested in stocks. The NASDAQ was in, invested, uh, invented in 1971. And this is the interesting statistic is that 56% of Americans today in 2021 own stocks. So we know that the investments are there. We want to start selling investments to our clients. Again, the famous investment quotes, be fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are fearful. No other than the famous Warren Buffett. He's the, the, the lead person in the industry world, in the investment world. An investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Benjamin Franklin. It's not how much money you make, but how much money you keep, how hard it works for you and how many generations you keep it for. This is Robert Kiyosaki. He's the one that wrote the book, Poor Dad, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So it's a really good book. Client's best interest. We need to take a holistic approach to clients' financial goals. Guide your clients. They need your guidance. I'm, your guidance. I'm going to show you today a little bit of Canadian statistics on how much Canadians are saving. So guide your clients. Know your clients. Know that their needs change over time. Make sure you're doing financial planning with them. Now, as you have on the life insurance side, your needs analysis, we also have the same thing to help guide you on the investment side with our risk tolerance questionnaire. So the risk assessment is something you could always leave behind while you're closing your life insurance sale so that they fill that out and you can get your client's risk tolerance. By choosing the correct asset allocation, it will guide you to a successful investment closing ratio. We want you to know which, when you're speaking with your client, what life cycle is your client in? Are they just getting married? Are they buying their first home? Are they having babies? Are their children graduating? Are you having, are your clients having grandchildren at the moment? Are they retiring? And of course, at the end, are they going in a home? Traits of successful financial advisors. Of course, we want a trustworthy financial advisor. We all know we're all in the professional industry of life insurance and investments. They wanna see an advisor who is organized and knowledgeable. The key takeaways are know your clients, understand your client's life cycle, and building relationships equals building your business. Here are some Canadian statistics that are very interesting. Retirement savings in Canada. 32% of Canadians age 45 to 64 say they have no retirement savings. 19% of respondents had less than $50,000. It is estimated that we need at least a million dollars to retire. It's interesting to see the gender gap. Women believe they need 1.2 million versus men who believe they need 1.4 million to retire. So women think they need less. 43% of women over age 55 don't have a retirement plan, and those who have a plan have saved 25% less than men preparing for retirement. The average middle-class Canadian has an RSP and or TFSA. 69% of Canadians have an RSP account with holdings on average of 112,000 by the time they reach age 45. 
58% of Canadians say they will rely on government pensions for retirement. 90% of Canadians don't consider enough the lifestyle they want in retirement. This is a great conversation to have while you're trying to sell them your life insurance policy as to what are their retirement goals. 60% of Canadians worry they will outlive their retirement savings. These are all interesting statistics while you're selling life insurance because I'm not convinced they're talking to you about their retirement plan. The ages of retirement, on average, Canadians retire at age 63 and a half. The federal employees retire at around 61. The private sector retires at around 65. And of course, the self-employed individuals retire around 68. It's interesting to look at the advisor's business mix. When we take a look at a career agent, this is what they sell. 41% of life insurance, 21% annuities, in 15% investment products. When we look at an independent agent, the difference is 42% life insurance, 17% annuities, however, only 5% investment products. And this is where it's crucial, crucial to start talking to your clients about RSPs, TFSAs, and non-registered investment accounts, which we will go over in series two of this three-part series. You do not want another career agent coming over to your clients and selling the RSP to them or a TFSA because what the next thing they'll do is they'll go and sell them a life insurance product as well. Now let's take a look at your revenue potential. So what this is, is we've now gone through the three part series and we believe you're very comfortable to start selling investments with your life insurance clients right now. So what happens when we take a look at your revenue potential? If you look at bringing in investments to Assumption Life, you're comfortable now, you've, you've spoken with myself, you've spoken with the BDMs, and you're very comfortable with investments, we want you to grow your business with your existing clients for your financial future. In year one or two, one and two, you would bring in 200,000 of investments to Assumption Life, and these are investments that you're closing after you're finished your life insurance deal. Year three to five, you would be selling 400,000 of investments per year and bringing that in. And again, we're gonna show you Vesta, which is our electronic investment platform, which makes selling investments with Assumption Life very, very easy. Next 13 years, you would sell 1 million a year to your clients. Now let's take a look what that means to your book. Now keep in mind, as you bring in these investments, you're receiving your full commission when you bring it in and you're receiving a trail each year on this investment. After 18 years and 5% net return, your book would grow to $22 million. How great is that? What's even better is what it can do for you when you retire. 22 million when you retire would be a retirement bonus by selling your book to another advisor where you would receive 285,000 for a book of 22 million. What is great is if you live in a small town, you'll be able to still go to the grocery store and see your clients because you've received commission and trailer fees over the past 18 years on this 22 million and you wanna sell your book and do a great transition for the new advisor because it shows that when you do a great transition, many of your clients will stay with the new advisor and you can be very comfortable with your new retirement. So how would you like a retirement bonus of $285,000? we are gonna show you over these three part series how easy that is to do. The key takeaways, which I think this one is number one of why you should be talking to your clients about investments is Canadians are in a savings deficit. Canadians need to start saving. Secure your business by diversifying your offer and give yourself a big bonus at retirement. Retaining your clients. These are very interesting statistics. Here's the opportunity for all you millennial advisors that are on the call today. The average age of independent insurance advisors is 62 years old. This is great for all you millennial advisors because you're going to have a great opportunity. 63% of, of current independent advisors today are in the boomer generation. So there is great potential out there for all the young millennial advisors out there who wants to grow their investment book and their insurance book. 
Retain your clients. One agency found that loyal customers are five times as likely to repurchase, five times as likely to forgive, four times as likely to refer, seven times as likely to try a new offering. It's interesting to note how expensive it is when you're trying to attain and acquire new customers. It is very important that we don't need, we do need new customers, but to sell to your existing clients. The benefits of retaining your clients. Client retention is as important as acquiring new ones. Increasing customer retention by five times can increase your profits from 25 to 95%. Do we need more clients or do we need to cross sell, cross sell instead? The success rate of selling to a new client is 5 to 20%. What I like is if when we're cross-selling to our existing clients, the success rate is 60 to 70%. Word of mouth, 70% of loyal millionaires are likely to refer people to their primary advisor. When they're looking at their primary advisor, the primary advisor is selling life insurance as well as investments to their clients. 44% of high net worth clients found that their wealth manager, they found their wealth manager or advisor through a referral. Word of mouth is very powerful. 92% of advisors said that referrals from current clients are their best source of new business. 81% of customers trust recommendations from family and friends over those from companies. Key takeaways are cross-selling will work best with your existing clients. Sell to your existing clients as it can cost five times more to acquire new clients. Loyal clients are more likely to refer you business. Now we're gonna talk about how should we do the cross-selling. When I did the research for the top five questions for cross-selling, here's what I came across. Ask questions, let your clients do 90% of the talking, take notes and do not interrupt them because they will tell you everything when they're talking about themselves. What motivates you to meet with me today? What exactly do you wanna to accomplish today? Where are you today and where do you wanna be? Tell me about your current savings plans. What keeps you awake at night? So these are all open-ended questions to help you get your clients to open up to you and talk to you so that you can try to figure out what is important for them. A few more open-ended questions specifically guided to investments is who else makes investment decisions with you? This was one of my number one questions when I sat with my clients because I did not want to go through the whole spiel and I have the wrong person sitting in front of me. I wanted the person who makes the decisions in front of me. So it was always a good question because they'd always tell me, oh, my spouse does all the decisions or I make all the decisions. And then you could continue with your investments. What are your retirement goals? What does retirement look like for you? And you will see statistics show that people do not look at retirement. They don't think about it. So it's really a great question because it starts to get them thinking. And then we have a few more opening ended questions. Where are you currently investing your money? Tell me about your best and worst investment experiences. This can kind of guide you if they've had a rough experience. Of course, right now the markets are very volatile. So they may have a bad experience right now where the markets are down and their investments are down. But if, like I said at the beginning, if you put them in the correct asset allocation for your client, you will see that it will be okay when there's a market correction, you've put them in the right risk portfolio for them. Three levels of effective listening, building rapport and understanding. Listening for needs, listening for cues and listening for understanding. It is so important to understand the areas which your clients consider important. Understand your client's broad financial situation understanding your client's must-haves. And trust me, when you open up those questions, they will guide you to their must-haves. Key takeaways are use open-ended question, let your clients do the talking, effective listening is key to building rapport. Time management, we all know how important time management. 
When you see the clock, when we don't have time management, this is a little bit what it can look like. The clock can be a little bit backwards. Be proactive, work strategically, plan for dealing with emails and texts. Block out times in your calendars. I know there's some advisors that block out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to see clients. And on Mondays and Fridays, they do their wrap ups and their prep to begin to see their clients. Have a routine with your clients for onboarding. We talk about this a lot in series two is to have your PowerPoint presentation made up and then you can use it with all of your clients and we will show you this in series two. Prioritize your time, time blocking in your calendar, be diligent, use technology. The utilization of technology is really gonna make a difference in your life. I know that since COVID had come, I am totally with technology now, and I used to be a very paper-based person. Now it's all technology and it saves me time. Improve productivity. What a client relationship manager, a CRM can do for you. It's interesting to see that with a CRM, there's great statistics of what it can do for you. You have your data all in one place. Your contact, it's a great contact management system for you. You finish with your client, you go put in your notes, you remember what you talked to them about. Six months later, you wanna go back and see what you talked about. It's in your CRM, you go back to that appointment and it's there, it's just a great contact management. You can run campaigns out of your CRM. You can have increased customer retention, customer, great increased customer service and increased productivity. Increased revenue by 41% is what statistics show that a CRM can do for you and 27% increase in customer retention. These are interesting trends. We all know that when COVID came, everybody was on Zoom, everybody was on go-to meetings. We were all doing these meetings by, by, uh, uh, digitally. The current trend shows all advisors use email, one third meet virtually with their clients, and half text their clients, and four tenths use social media. And what's happening in the future is very interesting. If you take a look at virtual meetings, texts, and social networks, 70 to 75% will be continuing to use these avenues to meet with their clients. It's important because sometimes if it's not a high net worth client, maybe they don't need an in-person meeting. Maybe they just need a virtual meeting. So just to let you know, this is not going away. These are the statistics of what's looking forward in the future. The key takeaways are find ways to organize your days that work for you. Streamline your efforts with a CRM, a client relationship manager. Use your client's preferred method of communication. Win-win holistic approach. Financial planning. As we talked about, set your expectations with your clients. Do your discovery with your clients. We know you're meeting your clients for your life insurance policy. We want you to continue doing that. Within the conversation of the discovery, just talk about RSPs a bit, talk about TFSAs, leave behind the investor profile questionnaire so that you can get the risk tolerance once you close your life insurance policy. Once that policy is closed, you'll go back to the office and enter the risk tolerance questionnaire in our electronic platform called Vesta. Find out their goals, do your recommendations, prioritize and implement and review. It's very important to do annual reviews. These are the FPSC financial planning guidelines that we use when we're doing financial planning with clients. As we mentioned, needs are not static. They change over time. Events can also affect your client's retirement plans. A loss of a job. It's important that you reconnect with your clients. A divorce. A sudden death of a spouse. This is why you're selling life insurance and this is why you're selling investments. These are times when your clients will need you because you'll have to review everything to see how, they're, how you're gonna move forward with your clients. With a holistic approach to financial planning, it's not all about the money. We do know that money is emotional. It's uncovering the needs and planning to decrease volatility in your client's life. 
You always want to meet your clients. And of course, the first thing we want to know is the cash flow. Clients cannot buy life insurance and they cannot buy investments if they do not have a good cash flow. We sit with our clients to do risk mitigation on the life insurance side, protecting gaps if something happens to them. You go through your needs analysis, you go through a disability insurance review, and you also may look at selling critical illness. The next step is debt reduction. We all know we want to make sure that our clients, especially with the rising inflation right now and the increasing of interest rates, we want to make sure we're talking to our clients about debt reduction. The next step would be beginning a pre-authorized contribution. Again, maybe $50, $100 bi-weekly to get their emergency savings up. Sometimes it's good to have three to six months of their salary saved in something very conservative. We will discuss conservative investments in series two of our three-part series. And then once we have the emergency fund, we go on to talking about retirement and what are their goals, what are their plans. It's basically risk mitigation on the wealth investment side. Accumulation of investments is important in case your client lives too long, which is a great problem to have. You will do that investor profile questionnaire, and just like the needs analysis, it guides you. The investor profile questionnaire will guide you to your client's risk tolerance to make sure you're putting your client in the correct investment portfolio for them. Then it's wealth preservation, financial independence, and of course, estate planning, leaving a legacy, just like Robert Kiyosaki said, it is not how much money you make, but how much money you keep and how hard it works for you, and how many generations you keep it for. Holistic approach, reviewing the last financial plan, meet your clients to discuss their financial goals, complete your life insurance sale, move on to investments, complete the investor profile questionnaire to determine investment risk tolerance, once you've done the investor profile questionnaire, you take it back to the office, you can enter all the information in our electronic platform called Vesta. And when you do that, what will happen? It will guide you to two options of what you could offer your clients. It is that easy. Again, begin with debt reduction, then help them build up to a three, six month emergency savings plan, then begin saving towards their financial goals. Understand the financial needs of your clients. A holistic approach, life insurance protects your clients in the event of death, and investments protect your client in the, in the event that your client lives a long life. Risk mitigation for life insurance ensures your client's family is protected for the unexpected. Risk mitigation for investments ensures your client's money is available for life. You do not want your client to outlive their investments. Keeping investments simple and providing support. This is why we are developing this course. Learn as you go. Investment knowledge is important. Just like Benjamin Franklin said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Investments 101, Series 2, Keeping Investments Simple. This is what we want. We want it to be easy for you. We do not want it to be complicated. Once you do that investor profile questionnaire, you can do everything at the office and send your client everything electronically to begin their investment savings. We, are, we have Vesta. It has the built-in investor profile questionnaire that we will review in series two. We have a guided approach to give you selected funds to choose from. Learn as you go. Investment 101, Series 2, Keeping Investments Simple. To just review what we went over today, we went over the history of the advents of the markets, a few great quotes from great leaders in the investment world, taking a holistic approach to financial planning, knowing which life cycle your client is in. We reviewed some great Canadian statistics which are very, very important because we do know that Canadians are in a deficit and we do have to play our part in helping them build wealth. We discussed the revenue potential if you decide to move forward with selling investments to your existing clients. We talked about cross-selling to your existing book of business 
And we discussed open-ended questions and effective listening skills. We went over our time management and what a CRM can do for you. Keep in mind risk mitigation on both the life insurance side to protect your loved ones who are left behind and risk mitigation on the investment side in case your clients live a long life. Keeping investments simple and providing support. This is why we have developed this three-part series because selling investments is easy it can, and it can be part of your retirement plan. I would like a bonus at retirement of 285,000. Learn as you go. Investment knowledge is important, Benjamin Franklin. Assumption Life is active on social media, and this is why. Within three years, advisors with less than 10 years, 10 years of experience expect to find one in five new clients to be sourced through social media. What's next? This is series one of our three-part series. Next, we will be showing you stocks and bonds, GIAs and annuities, types of accounts, so RSPs, TFSAs, Lira accounts, non-registered accounts, asset allocation with portfolios, makes things very easy for you. We have 18 portfolios, both on our segregated fund side and our registered investment account side, which we will go over in series three. We will review how what fee structures look like, and we will also go over the guarantees on segregated funds and how they work. Learning the investment basics, gain confidence in addressing the financial needs of your clients. We have our business development managers who are available for you all across Canada. We have Mohammed Sapoor, who's in Western Canada. We have Gareth Daniel and Jennifer Kosho, who are in Ontario. We have Youssef Lahou and Daniel Roy, who are in Quebec. And we have Midi Sahia, who is in Atlantic Canada. I will be sending you an email after this presentation, and I will make sure that you have all their coordinates, their phone numbers, their emails. We are here to help you build your investments. We also have our internal team. Our team is here to assist you, and this is our inside sales team. So I know that many of you probably speak to some of the inside sales teams. So Pauline Leblanc and Jeremy Alain, they take care of supporting any questions that you have on the life insurance side with our LIA platform, as well as any questions you have on the investment side with our VESTA platform. Both platforms are electronic platforms. We have Patrick Boudreau, who takes care of supporting Atlantic and Western Canada. And we have Sally, who takes care of Quebec and Ontario. At our head office, we have our, we have our investments and retirement team. They're always there to help you. I can assure you that most of the time they answer the phone. And if not, you hear back usually from them within 30 minutes. We have tech support, we have sales support, we have VESA support, and of course, don't forget to go visit our advisor corner where you can find a lot of information to help you sell investments and life insurance. I'm gonna pass it back to Alex to see if there are any questions in the chat line. So here's a great question that uh, came up from uh, Adia. Uh, T is asking, can you explain a little bit more uh, about the VESTA uh, recommendations, or I'm sure you may cover that uh, at a next session. <laughs> but again, if you can maybe just give a quick explanation of the VESTA recommendations. Okay. So what happens is when you're in VESTA, so VESTA is, uh, is a project that I worked on. Uh, I sat a lot in front of clients, so I know what it's like. You want something that's quick and easy. So VESTA is our electronic platform. You enter the application all online. It takes approximately 10 minutes to enter the information. So let's let's say you're opening up an RSP, you enter your client's you know, name, address, date of birth, social insurance. And what happens is because we've decided to put in the investor profile questionnaire, once you answer the questions to the questionnaire, it guides you to two options to offer your clients. So this is why we're saying it's easy to sell investments. You're finishing off your life insurance policy with your client. You've kind of, you know, given a few words about RSPs and starting to save, start your savings plan, and you've left behind the printed version of the investor profile questionnaire. You're now done your application with your life insurance. Everything is signed, sealed, delivered. The life insurance policy is done. So now you ask for the copy of the investor profile questionnaire that you asked them to fill out. 
you tell them, I'm going to bring this back to the office and by tomorrow, uh, you know, afternoon by four o'clock, I will give you a call. I'm going to analyze your answers and to see what, what is the best asset allocation for you. So once you go back to the office and you input it in Vesta, you're going to input the investor profile questionnaire and with what they answered, you're going to be able to have two options that will come up based on the answers of what your clients have answered in the investor profile questionnaire. So let's say they scored balanced. We have approximately four portfolios that we can choose from that are in the balanced area. So it would come up with two that they should choose. It could be a smart series, which I'll go over in series three. So it could be any of the portfolios. If you're not comfortable with investments, the best thing to start with would be selling portfolios. And then after that, as you know, over the years, four or five years, you can, you may get very comfortable with investments, but you'll see once you enter it once in Vesta and then you input the investor profile questionnaire, you'll see how easy it is to get that sale. As soon as you input it, call your client, you say, I analyzed my investor profile questionnaire and this is what I recommend. This is a balanced portfolio and you give them the name of the portfolio. Client says, yes, all you have to do is say, okay, expect your uh, digital, you're going to receive it from email because they're going to sign through the Vesta platform by email. And then you've closed your sale. As soon as they sign and you sign, we are now processing the application for you. So you'll see once I show you the demo of Vesta, and that's going to be in series three, you will see how easy it is to sell investments to your clients. That's so great. Thank that you. And her and just uh, one more question on that, then, uh, with the best of recommendations, is there some artificial intelligence built into it or to, to make it intuitive? Yes. Yeah, so what happens is based on this questionnaire behind the scenes, like let's say, let's say that client, the advisor decides they want to go with our smart series. And I know today that means nothing to you, but by series three, that will mean something to you. So let's say they go with the smart series. Well, they're in behind in the software. There's formulas back there to guide them to which smart series, like should you be taking a 2025? Should you be taking a 2045? Should you be taking a 2055? So we will be reviewing what these smart series are and what the portfolios are, because it's very important when you're not knowledgeable, you probably don't want to start designing it and designing your investment portfolio. And every year you're going to have to meet with your clients because it, you'll have to rebalance the portfolio. These portfolios are rebalanced for you. So that's the benefit of when you choose a portfolio. And I can tell you, we've just finished uh, taking a look at our portfolios on a, on a return basis, and they're right up there. They're performing phenomenally well. So we have everything at your fingertips. I will show you in series three. We do have a lot of marketing material that we're producing for advisors so that when you're sitting in front of your client, you can show them these one pagers. And again, when you see the investor profile questionnaire in series two, that's where you'll start to piece everything together. So yes, there is some, some intelligence in behind the, the uh, computer software of Vesta. That's great. Uh... Thank you, uh, Claudette, and thank you, Danielle, for kicking this session off. And I don't see any other uh, questions. Uh, and again, um, you know, thank you once again for all the advisors uh, attending today. Uh, we appreciate your business, and thank you very much. And uh, I guess we will see you all in session uh, number two. It was just to thank uh, all attendees today. Great session. Thanks, Claudette. Thanks, Alex. Uh, much appreciated, and uh, this is, for for many of you, it might be just a, a new beginning in here for a new, uh, a new string of services that you could approach and better service, uh, you service your clients even better than you were already. So uh, thanks to you all. And I just wanted to thank everybody for attending. I wanted to let you know the next session is next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern. So I'm sure, Alex, all the links are out. And you will see that as we go, you're going to see how easy it is to sell investments to your clients. Thank you all for attending. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.